The internet's unstable a bit. Um, okay, so we'll begin. Is it? Om Ajnana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanina Tasmash Recording in progress. Ube Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasati Kaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're reading chapter number 50, uh, 57. It's entitled Chatrajit and Shatavdanva Slain. <clears throat> so the, this story was con is concerning with the Shaimantaka jewel. The Shaimantaka jewel was in the possession of King. Satrajit, who was the father of Satyabhama. Satrajit. And Satrajit was killed because Shatadanva along under well, Shatadanva was influenced by Akrura and Kritavarma to go and steal the Shamantaka jewel. So Shatadanva went there and he killed Satrajit and stole the Shamantaka jewel. At that time, Lord Krishna was not present in Dwarka. He had gone to Hastinapur. So while Lord Krishna was away, that was when Shatadanva came there and killed Satrajit. So the daughter of Satrajit was Satyabhama, who was Krishna's wife. So, so Satyabhama was very upset when her father was murdered and she went to her to see to tell Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna immediately came back from Hastinapur, he came back to find, to get the people who had killed his father-in-law. So when Shatadanva, Shatadanva heard that Krishna was coming, then he was very afraid and he went to different people to ask them to protect him. He went to Akrura, he asked Akrura to help him. Akrura said no. 
And he went to Kritavarma, and Kritavarma also said he couldn't. They both knew. They so Shatadanva gave the Shamantaka jewel to Akrura and he ran away. Shatadanva first of all got a horse and he had a horse which could run at a very fast speed. It could run up to 400 miles. And so he rode on that horse and he ran he rode away from Dwarka. So because the Shatadanva had killed Krishna's wife's father, his father-in-law, Krishna was determined to catch him, to kill him. So Shatadanva was riding his horse but his horse, after some time, his horse became so tired that it died. So then Shatadanva ran on foot. He just, he, because he was so afraid for his life, he was just, he thought he must run, so he just ran away on foot. So Krishna and Balaram, they were following him, and they were following on the chariot. And they came there and they found that his horse had died. And when Krishna saw that he was running away on foot, then Krishna decided he would also go on foot to make it fair. So Krishna ran after him on foot. So Shatadanva was running and Krishna was behind him. So then Krishna took his Sudarshan chakra and he threw his Sudarshan chakra and he cut off Shatadanva's head. And then Krishna came there and he searched his body, but he could not find the Shamintaka so then he turned to Balaram, Krishna said to Balaram, he said, there was no point for us to kill this person because he doesn't have the jewel. Then Lord Balaram said, but then the jewel must be with another person. It must, he must have given it to somebody in Dwarka. So Balaram told Krishna, you better go back to Dwarka and find out the jewel there. 
่แต่บรมก็เลยบอกกระชนาว่าถ้าจะให้ดีเนี่ยเธอควรกลับไปที่เมืองรากาแล้วก็ไปหาว่าเขาเนี่ยได้ให้ใครไว So then Balaram said, "I'm not going to go back to Dwarka because we're already near to this city, Mithila. I want to stay here in Mithila because I know the king here. I want to stay here and pass some time with him." But Balaram said, "Don't be afraid. I'm not going to go back to Dwarka because we're near to Mithila." So Krishna returned to Dwarka, and Balaram went into the city of Mithila. So when the king of Mithila saw that Lord Balaram was coming to his city. He was very happy, and he gave a wonderful reception for Lord Balaram. He gave Lord Balaram many valuable presents. And so Balaram was very. Pleased, he was being he was given so much honor and hospitality that he he stayed there for some years for a few years. The king of Mathila is a, his name is Janak Maharaj. So while Balaram was staying there, at that time, the 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 eldest son of Dhritarashtra, Duryodhan, he came there to be with Lord Balaram. So Duryodhan came there, and from Lord Balaram, he learned how to fight with the club. Lord Balaram is very expert in fighting with the club. Actually, Lord Balaram has two weapons. One weapon is the plow, and the other weapon is the club. So Lord Balaram came there. Rather, Duryodhan came there, and he was blessed by Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram taught him how to fight nice with the club. So meanwhile, Krishna went back to Dwarka, and he has to please his wife, Satyabama. So he told Satyabama that I killed that person, Shatta Danva. Who killed your father? But he also had to tell Satyabama. He said that I couldn't find the jewel there; it was not on his body. But he also had to tell Satyabama. 
So anyway, Krishna said, we'll look for it here. We'll see where the jewel is here in Dwarka. It must be here in Dwarka with someone. So then Krishna, along with Satchabhama, they had to do the different rituals in honour of their dead father and such a Satrajit. So all the family and the friends and relatives, they all came together to observe these ceremonies in honour of Satrajit. So when Satrajit was killed, it was Shatadanva who killed him, but he was encouraged by two men. One was Akrura and the other was Kritavarma. Krita Varma. Krita Varma. Sir. Right. So the, these two men, Akrura and Krita Varma, they were a big influence on Shatadanva. Mm. They encouraged Shatadanva to kill Satrajit. So when they heard about how Shatadanva had been killed by Krishna, then they were both very afraid. And then they heard Krishna had come back to Dwarka. So when they heard Krishna had come back to Dwarka, then these two men, Akrura and Kritavarma, they left Dwarka. So when they left Dwarka, the people in Dwarka, they felt everything, they felt that, oh, it's become very inauspicious. There's, everything is... They thought there's so many disturbances here. And they thought the cause of the disturbance is because Akrura is not here. So the people were superstitious. As long as Krishna was present in Dwarka, there could not be any disturbance in Dwarka. But when Akrura left Dwarka, then there appeared to be something not right. So there are different reasons why people were thinking like this. So it's described that in the past, in the, in the province of Kasi, in the place of Kasi, which is Varanasi, one time there was a very bad drought, no rain. 
ครั้งหนึ่งเนี่ยที่คาซีหรือว่าวารณาสีเนี่ยมีอยู่ที่ครั้งหนึ่งก็คือเป็นแบบว่าแห้งแล้งมากแบบไม่มีฝน So at that time, the king of Kasi arranged to marry his daughter to the father of Akrura. t o n l u s of k a s a t i a r a n a s i a s t n g a n a l u s of Akrura. Right, the king of Kasi had a daughter named Gandini. The daughter of And the father of Akrura, his name was Swafoka. Swafoka. So the king of Kasi. Took advice from his astrologer. And it was arranged that the the daughter of the king was married to this Swafoka. Swafoka, the father of Akrura. And when they got married, then there was rain, a lot of rain, enough rain in Varanasi. So the people all understood. Oh, this Swa Swafoka, he is very powerful. He has special powers. So, because w a f a u k a had all this power, so the people also thought that his son Akrura he must also be very powerful. So people actually thought. That these two people are more powerful than Krishna. And they thought, so long as Akrura is there or his father s w a f o k a is there, there would be no problem. There will be no hunger. Nobody will go hungry, and there will be enough rain. There will be good, good rain, so we can do good farming. And it won't be too hot. It won't be too cold. And all the people will be happy. They'll be happy mentally and spiritually and physically. So then there was some trouble. As soon as there's some trouble in Dwarka, people thought the cause must be due to because because this person is not there because. These auspicious people are not there in Dwarka anymore. So because Akrura had left Dwarka, people thought, "Oh, this is very inauspicious. So things are all not good in Dwarka." And the older people, older residents in the city of Dwarka, the elders who are like the head of the society, they began to see different inauspicious signs. And the people who are older residents in the city of Dwarka, the elders who are like the head of the society, they began to see different inauspicious signs. 
เห็นถึงความไม่เป็นสิริมงคลที่นั่น So because there was no because when when Akrura left he took the s h a i m a n t a k a jewel with him so when they took the jewel away so then it had some influence on the condition in Dwarka on the the material conditions in Dwarka. แล้วก็ตอนเพราะว่าเขาเนี่ยมีมีอัญมณีพิเศษนี้อยู่กับเขาด้วยแล้วตอนที่เขาจากไปเนี่ยก็เขาก็เอาอัญมณีนี้ไปด้วย So people were all saying because Akrura is not here that's why everything is not good now in Dwarka เพราะว่าอคูระเนี่ยไม่อยู่ที่นี่ก็เลยทำให้หลายสิ่งหลายอย่างเนี่ยมันไม่ดีเลยที่นี่ So Lord Krishna heard everything all the people talking like this So Lord Krishna decided to call Akrura. He told, he sent a message to Akrura that he should come back from Kasi. Then he said, "Let everyone, let everyone do anything. Then it's to make Akrura come back to Kasi." So Akrura is like Krishna's uncle. So when he got the message from Krishna, he You know, Akrura is also a pure devotee. He knows Krishna as the supreme Lord, so he got the message from Krishna to come back to Dwarka. So he came back. And when he came back, then Krishna gave him a nice welcome. He considered him Akrura to be a superior person. And Krishna is the super soul in everyone's heart, so he knows what everyone is thinking. And he knew everything that had happened. He knew that Akrura had encouraged s h a t a d a n b a to steal the s h a m a n t a k a jewel. And so Krishna is smiling, and he began to speak to Akrura. And he called him that you are the best among munificent men. You are a very great soul. Krishna says to Akrura, he said, "My dear uncle, I know that the Shyamataka jewel was left with you." It was given to you by s h a t a d a n v a Now, King s a t r a j i t did not have any male son. s a t r a j i t didn't have any male son. So he didn't have a son. So if it's, if he had a if he had have had a son, then that jewel would have belonged to his son. But Sh a t r a j i t did not have any son. But uh, his daughter, Satyabama, she's my wife. And she's not very eager to get the jewel. But she's expecting to have a son. She's already conceived a son, and she's pregnant. And a short time, she's going to give birth to a child, and that son will be the grandson of such such a j i t เพราะว่าตอนนี้เนี่ยนางกำลังตั้งครรภ์อยู่เพราะฉะนั้นนางก็จะมีบุตรแล้วก็บุตรคนนั้นเนี่ยก็จะเป็นหลานของสัตตจิต So after that child is born and after we do the rituals 
then that child, that jewel will belong to the child. So in this way, Lord Krishna told Akrura that his wife Satyabhama was already pregnant and that her son was going to get that jewel. So Krishna told such a, he told Akrura, he said, that jewel, that Shaimantaka jewel is very powerful. No ordinary man is able to keep it. But Krishna says, I know you are very pious, and so there is no objection to you keeping the jewel with you. But there is one problem. And that, the problem is that my older brother, Balaram, he does not believe my story that the jewel is with you. So Lord Krishna said to Akrura, he said, I want you to show that jewel just once. I want you to bring it out and show it to all the relatives and all the people here so that they can understand that, that I'm speaking the truth, that you have the jewel. So when they see that you have the jewel, then they'll be satisfied and they will stop talking so many rumors. And Lord Krishna said to Akrura, he said, you cannot deny that the jewel is with you. I know it's with you. I know it's with you because you have been doing, your, your opulence has increased so much and you're performing sacrifices on an altar made of solid gold. So I, I know about the, I, I know the jewel that it, it produces two mounds of pure gold every day. This is, this is the special properties of the, this jewel, that every day it will produce so much gold. So Akrura was getting gold every day and he would distribute it. He would give, he would perform sacrifices and distribute it in charity. So Lord Krishna knew all about this and he said, this is proof that you must have the Shaiman Takaju. If you didn't have the jewel, you wouldn't have all the wealth needed to do all these sacrifices. 
ท่านไม่มีอัญมณีนี้เนี่ยท่านคงไม่สามารถทำพิธีบูชาไฟได้มากถึงขนาดนี้ So Lord Krishna explained everything in a nice friendly way and spoke in very sweet language and convinced Akrura ว่าพระเจ้าเนี่ยก็มีการพูดอย่างดีเพื่อให้อาคุระเนี่ยเข้าใจ I convinced Akrura that you cannot hide anything from Krishna. Krishna knows everything. So when Akrura heard all this, then Akrura brought out the jewel. He had it hidden in his cloth, in his clothing, and he brought it out from beneath the clothing. And placed it in front of Lord Krishna. So then Lord Krishna picked up the jewel in his hand and he showed it to all of his friends and relatives, and then he gave it back to Akrura. And then this way, everyone in Dwarka now knew that the jewel, the s h a m i n t a k a jewel, is being kept by Akrura in Dwarka. So this story of the s h a m i n t a k a jewel is very significant. And we are given a benediction that if anybody hears this story from the Srimad Bhagavatam about the s h a m i t a k a j u then they'll get free of all sinful reactions. Yeah, if you if somebody hears the story of the jewel, or if somebody describes it, or if somebody simply remembers it, then they'll all get benefit. ถ้าเกิดว่าใครได้ฟังใครได้อธิบายหรือได้พูดหรือว่าใครฟังแล้วจำเกี่ยวกับเรื่องราวนี้ได้เนี่ยทุกคนได้รับประโยชน์เหมือนกัน And the benefit is they'll get free of all the reactions of impious activities เออเขาจะเป็นอิสระจากผลบาปหรือกิจกรรมบาปที่เขาเคยกระทำทั้งหมด And if they have a bad name they'll get free of that bad name And they will get the the, the highest peace. So we can see just for a jewel, for this one jewel, because it could create gold. It created so much trouble for Lord Krishna. แค่เพราะว่าอัญมณีชนิดนี้เนี่ยเราเห็นได้ว่าสร้างเรื่องเยอะแยะมากมายให้กิชนะ And we see also how people are so easy to find fault with others, even they found fault with Krishna. เราสามารถเห็นได้ว่าผู้คนเนี่ยมีนิสัยในการหาข้อพลาดของผู้อื่นยังไงแม้แต่กิชนะเนี่ยพวกเขาคนก็ยังจะหาข้อผิดพลาด So people are very easy to become to to start finding fault with others without knowing the actual truth. ที่พลาดจากคนเนี่ยเร็วได้เร็วมากโดยยังไม่รู้ความจริงด้วยซ้ำ So we should be very careful. Before we start talking about others or accusing others of anything, we don't want to find fault with people. 
ก่อนที่เราจะว่าใครนินทา That even Lord Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead, could get problems. So we have to be very careful how we deal with wealth, valuable things like jewels. All right. So we're going to go on to the next chapter, chapter number fifty-eight. Krishna marries five queens. So it was mentioned in the last chapter. That there was a rumor that the five Pandava brothers and their mother Kunti had all died in a fire. Yeah. There was a fire in the house in which they were supposed to be living, and so people thought they'd all been killed in the fire. In the fire, it was it was only a rumor. The people thought they'd been killed in the fire, but they didn't. And it was not until there was a competition. There was an There was a competition to win the hand of Draupadi in an archery contest. So at that time, people saw, "Oh, Arjuna was still alive." It was only a rumor, but it wasn't true. So, then the Pandavas came back to the capital city, Hastinapur. And then the people saw that oh, they're not dead; they're all alive. They could see. So Krishna and Balaram were living in Dwarka, and they were getting news. First, they got news that Pandavas are dead. And then they got news. So they're not dead. They're still alive. And so Krishna and Balaram they decided they wanted to go to Hastinapur to see the Pandavas personally, to see them face to face. So when Krishna came to Hastinapur, he came there as a royal prince, and he came with his commander in chief, Yuyudan. Yuyudan came along with me. Yuyudan came along with Krishna, and he came along with the Pandavas. So Krishna just came on his own. He wanted to see the Pandavas because of his love for his devotees. So when Krishna came to visit all the Pandavas, without warning, 
the, all of them, they all got up to receive Krishna. Lord Krishna is known as Makunda, meaning one who gives liberation. If, if somebody comes in touch with Krishna or somebody sees Krishna in Krishna consciousness, then he will immediately get free from material anxiety. Not only will he get free of all anxiety, but he will also be blessed with spiritual bliss. So when Krishna came to see the Pandavas, the Pandavas were so joyful. It was like they had awoken from unconsciousness or from a loss of life. So when a man is laying unconscious, his senses and his different parts of his body are not active, they have no consciousness. But when he gets his consciousness back, then all of the senses immediately become active again, they start working again. So in the same way the Pandavas received Lord Krishna, just like they had come back to consciousness. They were all very happy, they were so happy to see Krishna, and Krishna embraced each one of them. And just by being touched by the body of Krishna, the Pandavas immediately got free from all the reactions of any material contamination. And they were feeling, they began to feel all spiritual bliss. And just by seeing the face of Krishna, everyone was transcendentally satisfied. So Lord Krishna was the supreme, he, Lord Krishna is the supreme Lord, but he's playing the part like an ordinary human being. So because he wants to be like an ordinary person, he showed respect to his elders like Yudhisthira and Bhima and he touched their feet. They were his two elder cousins. But Krishna and Arjuna are of the same age, so they embraced each other. And, and the two youngest brothers, Nakula and Sahadev, they're younger than Krishna, so they came and they touched the feet of Krishna to show him respect. 
ต่ว่าน้องคนแรกน้องสองคนเล็กเนี่ยที่ชื่อนอกุลาแล้วก็สหาเดฟเนี่ยมาแตะที่พระบาทรูปดอกบัวของพระชนะเพื่อแสดงความเคารพเพราะพวกเขาทั้งคู่เนี่ยเล็กกว่า So this is an etiquette. This is a social etiquette to greet each other according to their position. So then Krishna was given a nice seat, and he was sitting comfortably. And then they brought in the newly married Draupadi, young and very beautiful. So Draupadi, Draupadi comes, appears, and she shows her feminine gracefulness, her charm, her beauty as a young woman, and she came before Lord Krishna and offered her respectful greetings to Krishna. So Krishna did not come alone, but he came with some of the Yadavas. So they were also given respect in Hastinapur. One of the people who was with Lord Krishna was Satyaki. Satyaki's other name is Yuyudan, so he was also given a nice seat. So every all the people like Krishna and Satyaki. Each of us took their seats beside Krishna. So Lord Krishna met with the Pandavas, and then after he met the Pandavas, then he went to visit Kunti Devi, the mother of the Pandavas. She is also Krishna's aunt. From her father's side, she's a, she's the sister of Vasudev, so she's Krishna's aunt. So when Krishna met his aunt, he also touched her feet. And when Krishna came before her like that, then Kunti's eyes also filled with tears. And she saw Lord Krishna. Then she went once. She asked Lord Krishna about all her family members from her father's side. She wants to know about her brother Vasudev and his wife Deva. Oh, I want to know about Vasudev and his wife Deva. And Krishna also asked his aunt about how are the Pandava family. Because Kunti, although she's Kunti is related to Krishna, she knows that he is the supreme personality of Godhead. So she remembers all the problems she had had in her life. And how, by the grace of Krishna, her and the Pandavas had been saved. And she knew that without Krishna's grace, no one could have been saved from 
the fire which took place when their house was set on fire. So they were only saved by the mercy of Krishna. Actually, the house was, it was not an accident when the house went on fire. It was an attempt to murder them. But they had been saved by the grace of Krishna. And so Kunti begins to talk about the history of their life before Krishna. She's remembering all the events which happened in her life. And Kunti said, I remember the day when you sent my brother Akrura to get information about us. So this means that you always think of us automatically. So when you sent Akrua, I could understand there was no, no way of our being put into danger. There's no way we could get any danger because you sent Akrura. So all the good fortune in our life began when you sent Akrura to us. So from that time I was, I'm convinced that we are not, that you're always there to protect us, to give us protection. We may be put into different dangers by our family, by the Kurus, but I'm sure that if we can remember you, then we will be safe. Even ordinary devotees who just think of you are always safe from all kinds of material danger. And if that's true for ordinary devotees, it will definitely be true for us because we know you are personally remembering us. So Kunti said, we cannot have any bad luck. Just because of your mercy, everything will be good. So you have given special favor on us, but we should not think that it's because you are partial. We know you're not partial to some and 
impartial. We know you, you care about everyone. No one is your favorite, no one is your enemy. You're equal to everyone. And everyone can take advantage of your protection. But you have a special in you have a special inclination to help and to, to protect your devotees who always think of you. Because the devotees have special love for you, so you cannot forget them. The devotees cannot forget you because you're, you're present in everyone's heart, but the devotee always remembers you. And so you reciprocate, you take care of your devotees because they think of you, you take care of them. Just like a mother, she likes all children, but she takes special care for her own child. So you're, sit you're situated in everyone's heart, so you always create auspicious situations for your devotees. Okay, so we'll stop there today. Are there any questions? Anybody has any questions today? I don't see anyone. Press mm. back here. Uh, in chat box, no. No, sorry. Oh, God one good one. And uh, from Chinese devotee, maybe Sati Mataji can read. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Dingbai Guru Maharaja. Chao Ling Zai Megaran Sindrom. Chidao Megaran Zai Xiang Shama. Okay. So Krishna is in the heart. Krishna is in the heart of all living entities as the super soul. So under what such under what circumstances will Krishna uh, fulfill or respond to our desires? Okay. Well, Krishna is there in the heart as the super soul. He is the overseer and he is the permitter of activities. Krishna, 
แล้วก็ในฐานะที่เป็นผู้อนุญาต He is the witness to all of our activities. And he remembers all the things we've done in the past. And he knows what is our qualification. So we may have desires, but these desires will be can only be fulfilled according to our qualification. We say man proposes and God disposes. So we may we may have some desire, but Krishna will consider: Are we qualified to receive this desire? Is it is it good for us or is it bad for us? Krishna will consider. เราอาจจะมีความต้องการแต่ว่าคริสชาเนี่ยจะเป็นผู้ดูว่ามันเป็นมันจะเป็นสิ่งที่ดีสําหรับเราหรือว่าเป็นสิ่งที่ไม่ดีสําหรับเรา If something is going to be bad for our spiritual progress, then Krishna will not sanction the material desire. ถ้าเกิดว่ามันเป็นสิ่งที่ไม่ดีสําหรับชีวิตที่เราเนี่ยคริสชาจะไม่ให้มันเกิดขึ้น Just like if your little child comes to you. And says, "Mummy, I want some poison. I want to drink poison." Then the mother will not give the poison to the child. ถ้ามีเด็กเล็กมาแล้วก็บอกว่าคุณแม่ครับผมอยากจะกินยาพิษครับแม่ไม่มีแม่ที่ไหนจะให้ลูกกินยาพิษ So the same way, we may come to Krishna and we are asking something. Krishna, I want this. I want that. Oh, I want. Wealth. I want power. I want fame. I want opulence. Krishna will consider. Are, do we deserve it? So, if we deserve something, if we are worthy, if it's going to be good for our Krishna consciousness, then Krishna can sanction it. If it's going to actually help us to advance in devotional service, then Krishna may give it. But if it's just going to be, a, if it's going to disturb us and take us away from Krishna consciousness and make us more forgetful of Krishna, then Krishna won't will not like to give that desire. So everything will depend on our karma, our past activities. We will enjoy the fruit of our different activities. But there's also. The will of the Supreme Lord is not only karma. There's also the will of the Supreme Lord. So even though you may have some good karma, you may have some quite good karma. But if it's not going to be good for our Krishna consciousness, then Krishna will not allow it. 
บางครั้งเนี่ยเราอาจจะมีกรรมที่ดีหรือว่าคาร์มาที่ดีเนี่ยแต่ว่าคาร์มาที่ดีนั้นเนี่ยมันไม่ได้มันไม่ได้เป็นผลประโยชน์กับกฤษณะที่สำนึกหรือมันไม่ได้จะช่วยให้เรามีกฤษณะที่สำนึกเพิ่มขึ้นเนี่ยกฤษณะก็จะไม่ได้ทำให้มันเกิดขึ้น So a devotee will always be surrendered to Krishna's plan. Krishna is the supreme controller, and our duty is just to surrender to him. แล้วก็ส่วนใหญ่แล้วเนี่ยสาวกเนี่ยเขาจะมีความสิโรราชต่อกฤษณะแล้วก็จะจะทำในสิ่งที่เป็นไปตามแผนการที่กฤษณะจัดไปให้โอเคเดี๋ยวมีคนมีคนมีคนมีคนมีคนมีคนมีคนมีคนมีคนมีคนมีคน Uh, yes. Hey Krishna, uh, with my e x p e r i e n c e and all of the things, very superb. Thank you for the nice chat. Uh, I'm driving. I hope it's uh, clear. <laughs> I'm listening and driving. I hope you can hear me clearly. Otherwise, yes, yes, really. Okay. So my question is, we can see that you know, uh, even Krishna is behind. The world is criticizing. Myself, normally. It's because of our and wealth, right? So uh, you know, sometimes if people uh, are having that kind of mood, then is it okay to just renounce it? You know, but then what about the service? When we renounce those opulences, then maybe the criticism fades away. But then uh, you know, is it okay to renounce it if it's uh, you know related to you know? If that service is supposed to be for the pleasure of for Krishna or for the for the Lord, uh, how do we deal with this kind of situations? What would be the proper thing to do? To tolerate it or to renounce it? Or, or... yes, ma'am. ประเด็นคำถามของโปรดีนะคะก็ถามว่าบางครั้งเนี่ยถ้าเกิดว่าในการที่เราจะสละมันไปแต่บางครั้งเนี่ยมันอาจจะเป็นเกี่ยวกับแบบการในเชิงของการรับใช้ของเราที่ปฏิบัติอยู่หรือถ้าเราเจอคนที่ประเภทที่ว่าอชอบดาว่าคนอื่นหรือหาข้อผิดพลาดเนี่ยกับสถานการณ์เช่นนั้นเนี่ยเราควรที่จะสละมันไปแบบหลีกเลี่ยงจากมันไปเลยหรือว่าเราควรที่จะทําอย่างไรกับสถานการณ์เช่นนั้น Well the proper thing to do is whatever you're given in the way of Wealth or opulence, you want to use it in the service of Lord Krishna. สิ่งที่ดีที่สุดเนี่ยจะเป็นสิ่งที่ทุกอย่างที่เราได้มาในชีวิตเนี่ยเราควรใช้ไปในการรับใช้ Krishna. If somebody thinks, oh well, this is my karma, by my good karma, I've got a lot of opulence and a lot of power, a lot of fame. And we and we we just want to enjoy the good karma, then that that will be very temporary. It will lead to problems. Ultimately, your karma will finish, and then you may lose everything. แล้วถ้าเกิดเราเนี่ยมัวแต่คิดว่าเออเราเราเนี่ยทำให้เราได้มาในชีวิตรับใช้ในกิจการทีสุดแล้วก็เป็นการรับใช้ในกิจการทีสุดและเราควรที่จะใช้มันในการรับใช้ในกิจการทีสุดและเราควรที่จะใช้มันในการรับใช้ในกิจการทีสุดเพราะเรารู้อยู่แล้วว่าใ
So I think I think that's the main point that what what we do have, whatever opulence, if anybody's blessed with that kind of good karma, that you have some good karma, you have some wealth. So just like Prabhupada explains, if somebody has some money, he said better they use it for Krishna. Because if you don't use it for Krishna, then sooner or later it will be taken, it will be used. You have to use it on doctor bills or lawyer bills or something. So it's not much pleasure to spend your money on doctors or lawyers, but it's very pleasing to spend it for Krishna. And one who is actually devotee, he understands that all, it's all Krishna's anyway. Whatever we have, it belongs to Krishna. It's not mine. It belongs to Krishna. I'm just giving back to Krishna what's his. And on the more on the lower platform, the karma karma yogi, then karma yogi is thinking, well, I'm giving this to Krishna, I'm giving charity to Krishna, but actually, it's not really ours to give; it's all Krishna's. <laughs> We are born with nothing and we leave this world with nothing. So, when we have whatever we have, we want to try to use it for Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Uh, yes, Gomaj. Uh, should we do Chinese devotee question first and then we come back to normal devotee? Okay. Yes, Gomaj. Uh, uh, Sati Madhuri. Yeah. Uh, Madhuri Adila. Sorry,那马德瑞丽了吗？在记得问题，顶拜古鲁玛拉，请问为什么潘达瓦五兄弟经历了那么多的困难，且危险，而且都是九死一生的这种困难，就是面临生死的这样的困难，他们经历这些困
And what we learn is that they have greater faith. They take shelter of Lord Krishna when they're in these difficulties. They don't lose faith in Krishna. They have more faith in Krishna. And in this way they go on without being disturbed. They just accept that this is the nature of material world. Problems will come, the problems are temporary, we'll pass over them. Just like the Pandavas, they had their difficulties, then they had the Kurukshetra war, and then they, they became the rulers and they ruled the whole world. And then finally Lord Krishna left the planet and then they gave up everything and then they went back to Godhead. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, next question from Vaishnavi Mataji. We can take. Oh, Vishnavi Mataji, not here. Okay, Shaya Mataji. Yeah, Vaishnavi is there. Oh, Vaishnavi Mataji. Oh, yes, yes. Mataji, okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Chaya Mataji. You can go ahead, then I can ask. Thank you. Okay, okay. Oh, Mataji can first. Go ahead, Chaya. Okay, oh. Don't fight. Happy time, go, Okay, happy time, Mataji. Happy time, Mataji. Happy time, Mataji. Happy Please accept my humble obeisances. Okori to Silaba Puban. Mohan D. P. Fang Polali Krakong, Kavishta Maharada, and Nikasa. He didn't even want to go to the house. He didn't even want to go to the house. He didn't even want to go to the house. He didn't even want to go to the house. He didn't even want to go to the house. He didn't even want to go to the house. Okay. Okay. Uh, she heard a lecture about Gora Lila in some place. It said that uh, if a devotee uh, sometimes did a mistake, then the Lord also punish him like that. She never heard of that before. So is that true? and how, how does it work? Well, if a devotee makes a mistake, yes. then the Lord may... No they, if a devotee does something wrong, he may get some reactions from it. Yeah. Okay, devotee does something wrong, he may get some reactions from the, the wrong activity. Well, and the reactions will be meant to help to bring the devotee to a higher level of consciousness that he won't make the same mistakes again. Some devotee may have some bad habits, he may have some bad habit and he does something. And so he feels very guilty in himself, he feels very bad within himself that I have this bad habit. So that that guilt 
that is the that is a self punishment that I'm very fallen and very sinful so then we and we we feel, we feel we feel ourselves to be very unworthy of Krishna's mercy so a devotee somebody comes to Krishna consciousness yet yeah, they may, may they may have some fall down but then they can come back again to Krishna consciousness the reactions which they get from Krishna will be there in such a way to purify them, to take away their material desires and to take away their ignorance. <laughs> Just like in Srimad Bhagavatam, there's this pastime, Maharaj Chitraketu laughed at Lord Shiva because Lord Shiva was embracing his wife in front of an assembly of great sages. So Lord Shiva's wife got angry and she cursed him to become a demon. So that was like the punishment, because he was laughing at Lord Shiva, the punishment was that he would take a demon body. So even though he takes a demon body, he doesn't lose any of his bhakti. Whatever, whatever bhakti we have, you never lose it. It's always there in your bank account. But if we do some offense or we do something wrong, then our bhakti may be stopped for some time. But then again it can grow again. So Maharaj Chitra Ketu, he got cursed to become a demon, but that demon body allowed him to get rid of all of his karma, so he could go back to Godhead. So what did you hear? What pastime did you hear about it? Um, yesterday class from Maharaj of uh, Gavichandra Maharaj, um, I, I heard some sentence, um, about this, Guru Maharaj, but, um, I don't understand really in, inside about this because, um, I understand, uh, before about Bhagavan never to, to, uh, like punish us. Then I ask you, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I I have some question uh, more about if if we did some offense but we don't know about that offense, maybe um like um they didn't pay attention to it, and but after that we we know. And we realize um, often is disappear or not, Guru Maharaj? Often what? Um, 
มันก็ว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเราทําอาบัตที่เราไม่รู้อะไรอย่างเงี้ยใช่ไหมแล้วตอนตอนหลังเรามารู้แล้วเราปตันแบบรีไลซ์ตระหนักได้อะไรเงี้ยแบบเหมือนแบบคิดว่าเราผิดไปแล้วอะไรเงี้ยเหมือนสํานักสํานึกผิดอะแล้วบัตรนั้นมันจะหายไหมอะไรอย่างเงี้ยเข้าใจพี่ป่ะเข้าใจค่ะโอเค easy commit an offense without knowing it and uh, later on if we realize that we commit an offense do do we get the result of that offense yes we may do อืมก็ถึงแม้ทำโดยไม่รู้ก็อาจจะได้รับนะคะ but we can we can By engaging in pure devotional service, we can nullify all the sinful reactions. I mean, make make take them all away. Take away all the sinful reactions. Make zero. มันอาจจะเอาไปเอาผลบาปทางวัตถุเนี่ยไป devotional service itself destroys all sinful reactions แต่ว่าการอุทิศตนเสียสารับใช้เนี่ยมันจะทำลายพวกผลบาปเนี่ยได้ of course we have to always offer respects to the devotees And by offering our respects, that also takes away any sinful reactions against the devotee. จากการที่เราถวายความเคารพต่อสาวกเนี่ยมันทำให้อาบัตที่เราทำต่อเขาเนี่ยมันลดเลือนไปได้ And so we may not know. Some offense, but then uh, devotees, by the mercy of devotees, they will point out. They will tell us, "Oh, be careful! Don't do that. That's not good. That's an offense." They will guide us and they will correct us. What we should do, what we shouldn't do. So it's very, very important to have association with devotees. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for your explanation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Vaishnavi Maharaji, you have a question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sri La Prabhupada. My question is why Akrura left uh, Dwaraka city, and my another question is uh, uh, there are great souls like uh, Pandavas who who look like ordinary uh, uh, ordinary people suffering from karma. Maybe there are some great souls like Pandavas even now on the earth. How to identify them? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Who are what suffering from uh, great souls? Uh, like yes, they, um, suppose if we don't know about Pandavas, we might think that they are uh, ordinary people suffering from karma. Maybe we don't know who is a great soul. They also suffer, and ordinary people also suffer. So. Uh, I was thinking maybe there are some devotees who are uh, great like Pandavas, but we don't how to identify them. Who is a devotee, great devotee, or uh, it's very difficult to see from outside. I felt like that. Okay. So first question: Why did Akrura leave Dwarka? Come, ถามแรกนะคะถามว่าทำไมอากูระถึงออกจากดวาร์กา The Akrura left Dwarka because he was afraid, because he he had been involved in uh, encouraging this uh, Shatadanva to kill Satrajit. He told Shatadanva, "Go and steal the Shamitaka jewel." 
He was telling Shantadharma, you're stronger than us, you, we can't go, you go there. So both uh, Akrura and uh, Akrura and Kritavarma, they were both pure devotees. But they both got involved in this. And so there's different reasons why these two pure devotees, why they got involved in stealing the Shamataka jewel. One reason given is that they were both very angry at. Uh, the rumors, the Shatrajit had made so many rumors about Krishna that Krishna had stolen the Shamantaka jewel. So they were very angry at him for making all these false rumors against Krishna. Mm. Um, yeah, if you remember the story, Shatrajit's brother Prasena had taken the jewel and gone off into the countryside and then he got killed, he got killed by a lion and then the lion got killed by Jambavan and Jambavan took the jewel. At that time, Shatrajit had blamed Krishna. He thought that Krishna was involved in stealing the jewel. And then they put a rumor around Dwarka, and people were all doubting. Shatrajit for doing this. So that's why they wanted to steal the jewel from him. But another reason why they, they say how Akrura got involved in this was that because Akrura was responsible in taking Krishna away from Vrindavan, so the gopis cursed him that away from Vrindavan. So this was the and then Vaishnavi's second question that how can we recognize who are actually great devotees because there's many people suffering just like the Pandavas so is everybody suffering a great devotee well, we have, to, we have to see how they respond to the suffering. If they respond to the suffering in a Krishna conscious manner and they take more shelter of Krishna, then we can understand they're very good devotees. Mm. And uh, in the devotees, he says, Satatam kirtayanto mam yatantas chadrada vrita namashyantas chamam nityam nityam tapering with great determination. These great souls perpetually worship. Describe for us in the Bhagavad Gita that they're always thinking of Krishna and they worship Krishna and they offer obeisances to Krishna in devotional service. And 
for your translation. Thank, thank you, Guru Maharaj. We thank all the devotees for their questions and we we'll hope you have a good night and we'll see you next week. Our Recording stopped. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Jai, Guru Maharaj, Ki Jai. Thank you, Guru.